Wow, that was brilliant, that way. <sighs> Welcome, conference. It is indeed a pleasure to stand here before the People's Army. And I want to thank each and every one of you for making the sacrifice to come in here for the weekend. I know times are tough. I know money's in short supply. I know many of you have had to have a day off work, hotels, travel, childcare. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming today. I want my country back. The question is, do you want your country back? Say amen for that. You know, I remember a time when our children went to school and they were taught how to read and write and become good citizens. They were not taught they could be a different gender. They did not have to sit down and listen to a six foot five drag queen read stories to them. This has been happening under our watch in this country is an absolute disgrace. I want, I want this nonsense to stop. Yeah. Let children be children. Let them grow and develop and learn and make their own mistakes. They'll figure it out when they get to 18. Just because a little boy picks up a doll, it doesn't make him a girl. True. And just because a little girl kicks a football, it doesn't mean she wants to be a boy. I want my country back, and the country I'm talking about would not tolerate this nonsense. Over the past few years, nearly 150,000 illegal migrants have crossed the English Channel and they've been picked up by British boats and then placed in four-star hotels, given free legal advice and then allowed to settle in our country. It's a disgrace. Ninety percent of these arrivals are young men, some destined for a life of crime. We've seen it before. They've come into this country and committed all sorts of horrific crimes. And our government have passed three acts of parliament to stop the boats, and they still keep coming. These men have broken into our country. <laughs> and guess what, conference? I do not want them here. Come on. I want my country back, and the country I'm talking about would not tolerate this stupidity. You know what? Back in the 80s and 90s, in Ashfield, where I represent the capital of common sense, <laughs> so it's true, I live there. If you applied for a council house back in the 80s and 90s, the council would give you three sets of keys. I say, go look at three houses and pick the one you want. Nowadays, 7,000 people on the council house waiting list in Ashfield. You've got literally no chance at all of ever getting a council house. And yet, Parliament thinks it's a good idea to let over one million people a year enter our country. That's hundreds of thousands of extra people putting extra pressure on our public services, whilst decent, hard-working Brits can't get a, a dental appointment, a GP appointment, a school place for their kids. And these idiot politicians tell us that mass migration is a great thing and makes us all better off. Idiots, a lot of them. Yeah. Oh. I want my country back, and the country I'm talking about would not tolerate this stupidity. You go. Now then, this gets better. <laughs> Believe me. Back in the day, if we had civil unrest on our streets, you could be rest assured that our boys in blue would quickly be on the scene and get stuck in, so decent folks could go about their daily life. Good. Just imagine telling people in 1984 on the picket lines, on the miners' picket lines, I was there with my dad 
and my family. Just imagine telling the police and the, and the striking minds at that time that fast forward 40 years and we'd see a load of undernourished, vegans, grey-haired. <laughs> yeah. Armed with a Just Stop Oil high vis vest. <laughs> and a dangerous pair of Jesus sandals. <laughs> yeah. Entering London and bringing the whole capital city to a standstill. Whilst the Metropolitan Police stood by and did nothing, apart from dance the Macarena. <laughs> and admire the latest rainbow on their police car. <laughs> it's true. I want my country back, and the country I'm talking about would not tolerate this stupidity. Now, it's true. What about net zero? What a load of rubbish that is. Yeah. Let me tell you, these lunatics that keep banging on about net zero. Let me tell you about Drax Power Station in Yorkshire, North Yorkshire. This is a power station that used to burn coal from a nearby coal mine. Now, what does it burn now? It burns wood. Genius. This wood. This wood, by the way, comes from America. <laughs> we are literally chopping down forests and trees and putting them on diesel guzzling cargo ships, sailing them across the Atlantic, setting fire to them in Drax Power Station. And that's classed as renewable energy. <laughs> Not only that, that we subsidise this power station by a million pounds a day. It's cost us 11 billion pounds so far, whilst we've got shale gas, oil, under our feet. It's nonsense. In March this year, I think it was March, <laughs> might have been April, March this year, I became the Reform UK's first ever Member of Parliament. Yes, yeah, <laughs> You will also know that this was just after a few supposedly controversial comments I made about Mayor Khan. <laughs> I like to think of it as constructive criticism. In my opinion, he has given our capital city away and he should be thoroughly ashamed of himself. Yeah. I was told at the time that I must apologise to Labour's mayor in London. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you now, conference, I will never apologise to that man. Yeah. Let's look at his track record. Overall crime up by 21%, violent crime 35%, homicides 5%, knife crime 54%, sexual offences 51%. It should be him who's apologising to the people of London. <laughs> A disgrace, you're right. He's got the cheek to tell us that he doesn't feel safe in London. <laughs> Yeah, let well, that sink in. He's got bodyguards, armoured car, 24-hour security. He's in charge of the Met Police, and he doesn't feel safe. <laughs> How does he think the 10 million people that live in London feel under his leadership? <laughs> this man needs booting out of office for the sake of London. In July of this year, I became the Reform UK's first ever elected Member of Parliament. Yeah, you can clap for that, though. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's a much better feeling being re-elected than the first time round, because I had a massive point to prove, as you know. Yeah. But, conference, 
the greatest achievement during my political career was in 2022, I was voted the worst man in Britain by the Daily Mirror. Yeah. Now that's a feat even Nigel Farage cannot surpass. There's no chance. But I'm telling you what, it was a close run race that year because in second place, hot on my heels, was Prince Andrew. Even I find it funny, and I've read it about 20 times. So. <laughs> yeah, the Daily Mirror criticised me for my stance on, on the England side taking the knee. Nobody should be taking the knee to Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah. They also criticised me, criticised me over some supposedly controversial things that I've said, listen, it's not controversial to call out BLM. It's not controversial to be concerned about our, what our children are being taught in schools. It's not controversial to be concerned about mass immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about rising crime in our country. And it's not controversial to defend our history, our heritage and our culture. <laughs> Let me tell you this, friends, our, our great country is a gift to the world. Look, it really is. Look at the gifts we've given to the world. The Industrial Revolution, steam engines, mining, mills, shipbuilding. Did you know that the UK has invented 51% of all the inventions in the world over the past thousand years? Incredible. We are the greatest country in the world when it comes to inventions, yet we cannot invent anything to stop the small boats. <laughs> Look at the sports that we've given to the world. Football, cricket, rugby, golf, tennis, hockey, badminton, squash, table tennis, boxing, snooker. The list goes on and on. Look at culture. D.H. Lawrence, Wordsworth, Keats, Byron, Shakespeare, Dickens, Tolkien, Orwell, Jane Austen, Ian Fleming, C.S. Lewis, George Eliot, and the greatest cultural hero of our time, Jim Davidson. Where is it? <laughs> Where are you, Jim? There is it. There we go. He didn't know about that. <laughs> Just look how great we are as a nation. Yet Parliament seems determined to give all, give all that away and apologise for our past. Now, my message is simple. We are a great country. And if you do not like our history, our heritage, our culture, then clear off. Yeah. Yeah. Is that plain speaking enough for you? Is that yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a bit more. Let's be honest, friends. We have made mistakes in the past. And when we make mistakes, we must apologise. And we've been responsible for some awful things. Things like the BBC. You know, just a few weeks back, they sent me a, a, a reminder for my TV licence, and uh, some of you may have seen that I ripped it up on, online, and hey, yeah. Listen. Guess what? They've sent me another. Now, what do you think we should do with this? Yeah. Huh?
Friends, we have a real battle on our hands to save our great country, you know this. But it's you, the People's Army, that is our last defence, because Parliament's given up on us. We've got five MPs now, and I'm proud to be one of them. And our membership is growing every single day. Next year, we're going to win hundreds of seats, council seats, across the country. That's a fact. But we must take this fight to Parliament so we can take back control of our country and win the 2029 20, general election and put Nigel in number 10. Friends, we can do this, but we can only do it if we stand strong. The establishment absolutely hates us. They want us gone, but we're going nowhere. They will not allow us on the select committees as they do not like scrutiny. And they do not want us on GB News either. They are trying to cancel us. But we have 4.1 million people in the People's Army and it's growing every single day. Listen, the mainstream parties are scared of us, and so they should be, because we're coming for them at every single ballot box in the country. Yeah. Friends, stay strong, keep the faith, spread the word, and together we will get our country back. Thank you. Yeah.